This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. After a day of meetings, Commonwealth Secretary General is right now hosting delegates of the 19th Conference of Commonwealth Education Ministers to a reception. That's where Altavis Munnings is standing by as a major conference is about to wrap up here in the Bahamas. Good evening, Alto. Well, day four charisma of the 19th Conference of Commonwealth Education Ministers is now history, and it was a very full day for delegates here at the Atlantis Paradise Island Resort. Some of them participated in a stakeholders forum, which we told you about in our earlier broadcast, and some of them also participated in a teachers forum that featured, of course, teachers. Well, the local chairman of the teachers forum is joining me right now. She's Ida Poitier Turnquest, no stranger to the Bahamas. Mrs. Turnquest, tell us exactly what was the main purpose of the teachers forum for this conference. The main teachers, the main um, focus for this conference was for us to come together to discuss items that are pertinent to teaching because as you know, the teachers are the center of education and that education is the foundation of any development of any country. And so we came together f uh, from around the Commonwealth to discuss issues related to each one of our countries and we are going to now present that to our education ministers so that they would put forth to the governments of their countries the importance of education, the importance of knowing that education is a human right. It is something that all children are and should have, and it should be a free from birth to death everyone should be entitled to have that education. And so we are pushing uh, ministers to make sure that we are, education is financed and it is put forth where we are now going into our new goals of the Sustainable Development Goals. Unfortunately, we had 15 years of the Millennium Goals and we did not meet any of those goals. And so we are hoping that now with the new sustainable goals, we would at least meet some of those goals over the next 15 years. And quickly, Mrs. Turnquist, you were telling me that about 150 delegates participated in the teachers' forum. Were they receptive to the information that was provided? Extremely receptive. They were very, they participated very well. Everyone was excited. And we ended on our last um, panel discussion talking about the underachievement of boys and girls and it was quite a discussion on that. So we, we're hoping that things will move forward as we go along. Thank you so much. That was Ida Poitier Turnquist. She's the local chairman of the Teachers Forum of the 19th Conference of Commonwealth Education Ministers. And once again, we want to encourage you to stay tuned to the ZNS Network for the final day, which is tomorrow, a live press conference, as well as a communique by the Minister of Education, the Honorable Jerome Fitzgerald, and the closing ceremony, which we will be airing for you. Reporting live from the Paradise, Atlantis Paradise Island Resort, I'm Altavis Munnings. Back to you, Charisma. Thanks so much, Alto. Hundreds are expected to be enrolled in the Department of Social Services pilot program. RISE is the new name for government's conditional cash transfer program that now attaches conditions before any cash amount is given to a deserving applicant. Jimmy and Swain took to the streets recently to get public feedback on the new program designed to break the back of poverty. Social Services Wolf Road officials will begin registering about 800 current prepaid card holders at the pilot launch for the Conditional Cash Transfer Program. In modernizing the benefits, the Conditional Cash Transfer Program attaches educational and health components to beneficiaries must comply with to receive monthly payments. Members of the public were asked about the program. Most agreed, saying it's an improvement. I think the initiative um, is good. For especially the inner city kids and it would motivate the parents okay to help them um, to do better I think it's ideal I think it is necessary because you see a lot of these children who are um, obese you see a lot of women who are pregnant and you do not know the reason why or the situation that they found themselves in and it is good that the government see these problems that are arising others question whether recipients will comply I don't think people should just be able to register and obtain benefits it's like calling the fire engine but you start to fire you understand if you want to that they have the resolve to a, a problem, I don't think the government should help you. That would be up to them. You know how it is. Some of them will, and some will try to avoid it. That's normal. 
Meantime, Program Manager Marva Russell Min says recipients will be counseled on the importance of compliance. And part of the enrollment is a training period, and in that training they will be told about the compliance and be encouraged to fulfill those requirements, and if they don't, then there is a series of steps we will go through, and the last step, of course, is they won't get the payment for the compliance. Registration begins Monday at the department's Wolf Road office. Shimonita Swain, ZNS Network News. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it.